All right. Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and I'm here today with my awesome dermatology residents, and we're going to talk about some bacterial and a few fungal infections. Um, we we'll go through some unknown slides. All right. So who wants to take this uh, first one, case number one? All right. It's a shingles biopsy. Mm-hmm. And from low power, not real exciting, right? Not a ton of inflammation. There's a little bit of uh, extra keratin up here. Maybe some spongiosis. So what do you think the diagnosis is or what kind of differential would you have in a case like this? Like the, uh, the path that's not really specific, but like a normal skin differential. Yeah. What kinds of things do you think of when the skin looks relatively normal? Like Ithiosacral deris, tinea, vilido, amyloid sometimes. Good. Those are all good things to think of when the skin looks normal um, or relatively normal. You, I also sometimes think of uh, TMAP, telangiectasia macularis, eruptiva perstans, the you know, subtle adult form of mastocytosis. Here I think there is some sponge. So I would say my first thought here is that this may be a sponge derm. It surprisingly has very little inflammation. One thing though, when I see sponge derm that has, or if I see any skin that has a thickened layer of compact orthokeratin. So see the keratin here is thick and dense and the, well, there's a little bit of para in there, but it's kind of thick and mostly just pink without nuclei. What should that make you think of? Uh, maybe tinea. Yeah, dermatophytosis, tinea, often produces that thick, compact orthokeratin. Sometimes it's sandwiched between a layer of para, like here, there's ortho and that, like dense ortho and then para. The sandwich sign is supposed to be pretty useful for dermatophytes or tinea. I feel like I, most often when I see the sandwich sign, it's not tinea. So I feel like you can see that in resolving dermatoses where there was a rash that was inflammatory, like sponge derm, and then patient comes for a biopsy 10 days later or something. And then by that time it started to resolve. And so the layer of para has been pushed up by a layer of more normal um, keratin. All right. So here that is the diagnosis is dermatophyte or tinea. And look, it's a little hard to, okay, it's pretty hard to see some of these slides. Of course, it's going to be hard to see because we're looking at very small things. There's a little tiny circle there with a little dot in the middle of cytoplasm. That's the cross section of the fungal hypha. And here's another hypha right here that's running kind of longitudinally. And you might be like, really? Well, some people say that they can make the diagnosis of dermatophyte just on H&E. And there are times like this where you can really see them. And sometimes they turn a bluish tinge. But in my experience, the tinea dermatophytes are usually totally clear, even when there are a lot of them. And they're often very hard for me, at least, to detect def with, with confidence on H&E. So if I have a doubt, I do a PAS stain. Okay, but you can, in this case, very nicely see the little holes. And to me, the compact orthokeratin is one clue. What are some other clues microscopically to dermatophyte? When should we think of dermatophyte uh, fungus? Oh, here, the, look at this. This is a nice longitudinal. Oh, it says this is the max. There's a longitudinal hyphae right there, hypha, excuse me, right there. And again, some little cross-section tubes. But it's, it's kind of subtle, even in this case, which is florid. So what, what other things, aside from compact ortho or maybe a sandwich sign, what other things can make you think of a uh, of dermatophyte? Um, just like the normal skin differential, if you're just struggling, like nothing flares out, it jumps out at you. At That's true. But there's one other thing. If I see sponge derm with, a, with one extra finding, does anyone know what thing, if I see in sponge derm, will, at least for me, prompt me usually to do a PAS? Like a subcorneal postural. Yes, exactly. Neutrophils in the stratum corneum. Now, plenty of times I see that in sponge derm, maybe because it's been, you know, impetigenized a bit by bacteria from the skin surface. But when I see neutrophils on top of a sponge derm, uh, a pustule or even scattered ones, unless I've got some other good diagnosis or a reason that it doesn't make sense to be dermatophyte, I'll usually do PAS. I know some people will do PAS on every sponge germ they get. I personally feel like that's a little bit overkill. Then again, maybe I'll miss a case of dermatophyte here and there. I'm not sure. Um, I have seen cases like this one where, look, aside from the compact ortho and the fact that you can at closer look see multiple little areas where the hypha, the hyphae are, um, there's no neutrophils. There's minimal inflammation. This might not look real exciting. So a couple other things I use are the clinical clues. If you guys as dermatologists tell me, rule out dermatophyte, 
or that you're thinking about dermatophyte. If you tell me that you put steroids on a rash and you thought it was sponge nerve, atopic, or eczema, you put steroids on it and it got worse or, or didn't resolve, that usually will prompt me to do a PAS. If you're telling me your differential includes something that has a ring or annular shape, like a bicy sponge derm, but you were asking for granuloma annulari, then I'm going to think about doing dermatophytes. Those are all reasons that I'll, that will usually prompt me, in addition to the clues I see microscopically, those clinical stories of, of persistence or worsening after topical steroids, which is, of course, one thing if you put steroids on dermatophyte, it will flare up, right? And then it starts looking weird and becomes tinny incognita and, um, and then can be really hard to diagnose. And I've seen really severe cases of that where I saw a poor kid in fellowship that had had a rash for like two years or a year and a half and had been putting multiple different steroids that their their doctor um, uh, was prescribing for them and no one ever scraped it or biopsied it and it was just dermatophyte. So let me now switch over to my PowerPoint real quick and just show you an example. Here's an example of, uh, let's full screen that. Here's dermatophytosis where you have sponge, you have that compact ortho and some neutrophils and debris you hear in the follicle also. And this is what the PAS stain would look like. You can use GMS if you want. I think PAS works really well for superficial fungi. For invasive fungi, sometimes GMS works better. But you can see the little septate hyphae, and they tend to run parallel to the skin surface, whereas other things like candida tend to kind of dive down. Dermatophytes tend to kind of surf across the waves. I, I stole that from someone else, but I'm not actually sure who it is. I, I feel like it's something Dirk Elston would say, but I, I can't remember if I've ever found proof of that. And then here's a real close-up view where you can see, if you're not sure, sometimes you see PAS positive stuff um, in the stratum corneum because serum will be PAS positive. The key to me is seeing either a cross-section round uh, tube or an elongated hypha, uh, hypha that has either little septations in it or that you can see there's a clear hollow center with a thick pink on the outside. And they're very uniform in shape, in diameter. They're very like constant in their shape. I find that helpful because sometimes I see pink stuff and I'm like, is that real or not? And you got to decide, um, you know, if I tell you in my report, well, there's some pink stuff and I'm not sure if it's fungus or not. You may not be real happy with me. I have occasionally done that and said, I'm a little worried, but I can't be sure. And I want you to scrape it or culture or something like that. All right. And this is an example of bullous dermatophytosis. Note the neutrophil abscess. Uh, so every once in a while, you can get really excessive spongiosis or sometimes really abundant dermal edema. In a case of dermatophyte, that can cause um, uh, dermatophytosis. And I remember this case well because it was not suspected clinically. And I even felt like, oh, it's not going to be dermatophyte. And it totally was. And I'm sorry, but I don't have a picture of the PAS here, but you'll have to believe me. There were fungi.